Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tano Merkaba and in today's video I'm going to be speaking about Virgo moon through the houses. So in my previous video I just um, touched on like the basic archetype of Virgos and like what the Virgo moon really does um, and how it like plays out in the human person and um, in this video I'm going to be speaking about the Virgo moon through the houses, right? So if you have all that Virgo-ness, all that Virgo energy that I spoke about in my previous video that you should check out before you watch this one. Um, and then in the houses, it's, it's like you're doing all this Virgo energy, but in which area of life? Because the houses are basically areas of life, you know? Um, but in my previous video, I just spoke about how Virgo moons are like very um, nervous people, kind of like a Gemini moon, a Gemini sun sign person, even Virgo sun sign person. They're very nervous people, very um, detail orientated people. So they may also like to detail how their life is going to be and they can do this with other people. And this is kind of their downfall is because even in relationships that these people kind of like to organize how the relationship should be, you know? And then if they don't have any control of that organization or how everything should be, then they kind of get nervous and they kind of get like, naggy in a way because like now you're threatening their emotional comfort you know and our emotions is how we nurture ourselves and how we like to be nurtured and basically um the process of like being emotionally stable basically kind of like fourth house th fourth house things but not technically fourth house thing you know um but yeah virgo moon sign people right so if you have your virgo moon in the first house so what is your first house this is your appearance this is the people, places, and things that are personally involved with you and that you are involved with. Um, this is your, like, your personality, basically. You know, the first house is your personality. But not only that, but personal things to you and people that are personal to you and things that you take personally. Or things that are, basically, anything that's personal, you know. So this is also really your, um, your appearance, right? So if your moon sign is in the first house, right? So now the moon doesn't really like to be here because it becomes selfish, you know, it's only, and it's reacting and responding to itself. So with this, you know, as a Virgo moon, see now Virgo is already, you already somewhat take things personally, but I think if, not even think, but I know when it's in the first house, right, you're already taking everything personally. And you think when people do things, it's personal to you, right? And it's personally, um, people do things to, I don't know, make you feel a specific way. So you always take things like, oh, it's kind of, it kind of puts you in like a, a bubble of everything is happening because of me that type of thing right so not only this but you like to organize the people and places and things in your in your life right so you probably like let's say you grew up in this specific area so you have these specific friends so you've organized these friends with this group right with this place and then you move to another area and then you have these friends right so you like to organize them and you don't like when somehow this friend from when you grew up meets this friend it makes you nervous because it's like oh my god oh my god no 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 you know that that type of thing just because like um you've already organized just those personal things but personally you are an organized person you know and you know how to organize other people's lives you know sometimes it may be kind of tricky to like because you, you you as a virgo moon sign person in your first house you won't allow are you gonna take offense to somebody trying to help you you know, because you're going to start thinking, like, what the fuck? You don't think I know what I should be doing with my life? Like, you don't think you don't think I have the mental capacity to, like, formulate the, the constructive, practical reasons as to how I should be, like, running my life? How dare you? Like, how fucking dare you? And then you start, like, nitpicking somebody else and, like, nit nitpicking their personality. Like, how dare you? you? You don't even wash your ears. Okay, your teeth are always yellow and dirty. Okay, I don't even know when the last time was that you actually washed your hair. Because right now, I can smell the grease from here. You know, that type of thing, you know? Then you just, like, take, take that personally. And you know... Because you're also ruled by Mercury. So, you, 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 you like, you'll even know how to formulate the right words to hurt somebody. You know, like, in that way. So you'll formulate the right ways or the right um, words to, I don't know, personally attack somebody else, you know, because you also feel personally attacked most of the time, you know. You may even feel personally attacked when you go out on a date or you go out and people, and you feel like people didn't make the necessary effort to, like, look good, smell good, or, like, present themselves in a presentable way. You know, you take that personally, like, what the fuck? Like, I shouldn't even be around somebody that like doesn't take themselves seriously in that way like you you really couldn't like you really couldn't clean your nail like you really couldn't clean a shower oh my god how dare you like and you came to me with that how fucking dare you you know that type of thing <laughs> that type of thing you know 
So I like even then, I feel like you could like it's really good for you can manage other people's lives and like other people's talents and you know how to like kind of you can not someone you can milk somebody of of their talents and shit like that you know you know how to like kind of take somebody to the top but it may be difficult for you to do that with yourself you know because you feel you feel like if somebody is trying to like kind of manage you or organize your life you know you're kind of feeling it's like no like I know how I'm feeling, right? And I know how to organize my shit. So, it, it, you know, it's like somebody's kind of like poking at your soft spot if they, if you feel like they're trying to somewhat like organize your life, you know? Because already, I feel like internally you you have already organized how you feel and how you feel about things, you know? So, and you don't like when other people say things or try to do things to make you think another way of whatever it is that you've already organized within yourself, you know? So that type of thing. And then if it's in your second house, so your second house is your house of values. It's your house of um, personal values. So how you value yourself, things that you value outside of yourself. So, you know, your family, um, clothes, shopping, money, whatever is it, whatever it is that you value, you know, whatever, it, whatever it is that like, because um, the second house is an earth house. So it is tended towards stability because this is the house that rules um, Taurus, right? So in this right, it's like... Um, you value your routines you know and this is what makes you feel comfortable right because either way the moon is exalted in the second house right because even here you're just like loving and appreciating what makes you feel comfortable and how you make yourself feel comfortable right and how you make yourself feel comfortable is through routines you know analyzing shit seeing the details of things discriminating of like what could be right what could be perfect what could be like this what doesn't work what da 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 so you value these things you know and most of the time, you're very secure with knowing that you're this type of person, right? But here's the thing where you can also come. You, it's like you, you kind of tip it, tap into Aries energy a little bit with this because because you value whatever it is that you do and you value your own systems and you value your own way of doing things and you value the fact that you know how to see what's right and what isn't right and what works and what doesn't work. You know, you could, because you value that so much, you could like kind of that you can kind of impose that to other people so let's say you grew up your entire life and you iron your way in, like you iron your clothes in a specific way you know or you wash dishes in a specific system right if you see somebody else not doing the things that you do in a specific way you're going to kind of criticize how they do it and be like you know move over i know an easier way to do this and see here's the thing you're not allowing because there's there's so many ways of doing anything you know there's many ways of cutting a potato there's many ways of cooking there's just many ways of doing anything, right? But it's a thing of, with the Virgo moon in the second house, it's like, because you value whatever it is that you do and how you do it, if you see other people not doing it the way that you do it, you're going to feel the need to, like, give your two cents in and tell them, I feel like you could do it this, do it in a better way, you know? And sometimes it could be a really, like, because sometimes you may be around somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing, you know? And then you could, like, be able to help them and give them, like, that stepping stone of, like, learning and knowing how to do something in a... Virgo way, <laughs> in a Virgo moon way, you know. But here's the thing: you may be around an Aquarius or a Sagittarius or a Scorpio or Aries or a Taurus or a Cancer or a Leo, or a Capricorn, you know. And they kind of already have formulated their own ways of doing something, you know. And then you as a Virgo moon come, and then you like annoy the shit out of them, the shit out of them, because they're like, oh my god, dude, like chill. Sure. I know what I'm doing, even though it's not, like, how you usually do it. I know what the fuck I'm doing, you know. Um, so just chill out with that, you know. Just chill out with that. But for the most part, I feel like you, because you, like, you could, you're very helpful in a way that you could also kind of um, help somebody else make sense of whatever it is that they're doing or feeling, you know. You're, like, the type of person that can um, mm, uh, micromanage someone's... <laughs> micromanage someone's steps in life you know even especially after a breakup you know i feel like you you know like let's say your friend just broke up with somebody and it's been some time now and they want to like open up a restaurant or open up a fashion something or whatever you know like you'll know um the different website they can click on to to learn something or apply somewhere you know shit like that like you're very you're great help in those areas of knowing like where to go and like what to do or the necessary steps to take you know because you kind of in that way you share like capricorn energy you know you can like initiate 
um, stability for somebody else. But it's different with Capricorn Moon. Um, but anyway, with that, like you, you really know how to like help somebody kind of take the necessary steps to get somewhere, you know. So that's that's like a really helpful too that Virgo Moon people in the second house have, you know. And then um, if it's in the third house. If you have your moon sign, in, in, if you have a Virgo moon sign in your third house, so in the third house, the third house is things that you're familiar with, people, places, things, so your friends, your siblings, um, your neighborhood, um, talents, words, you know, just shit like that, anything, excuse me, so people, just anything that you're familiar with, you know, like, I don't know, just think of anything that you're familiar with, that's your third house, right? So this is the house that rules Gemini, and this is obviously already ruled by Mercury. Mercury rules the third house and the sixth house, right? Um, which is Gemini and Virgo houses. So in the third house, what makes you feel comfortable, right, is being around people and places and things that are familiar to you, you know. But because Virgo is here, how it like kind of um, translate is that you it kind of adds a double mercurial vibe kind of you know but only here it's a square kind of so with your virgo moon sign in the third house i feel like you are here to learn kind of to because you're gonna speak right this is what makes you feel comfortable is communicating about things that are familiar to you right but with here it's going to be like you're organizing things that are familiar to you you know so i think even with this um so let's just say you're a Virgo moon and you play guitar, you're a Virgo moon, and you read, like, I feel like with this you do read a lot, um, but let's just say whatever it is that you do, you know, you probably um, work at a local store, and you probably work there, or your mom works there at a local store, or your family members work at local stores, you know, you probably grew up even around, like, um, most of your life you spent with people, like, you, you, you've grown up in the same environment that you know you were in when you were younger that type of thing you know and you know how to like you're the person that knows exactly where everything is at you know and i feel like you could also be the person that like you're always helping your friends kind of organize their own lives you know or you may have other friends that like do this with you you know other friends that like help you organize your life too depending on like other aspects too you know you may you may even have like your siblings that help you organize your life or you may be the person that helps your siblings and your friends organize their own lives you know but for the most part you like i feel like it kind of adds a double emphasis with this and i'm saying that here i feel like you're 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 here kind of to learn how to whatever the, like you see it's not going to be like gemini where you're kind of like saying whatever that comes top of your head right i feel like with here you're, you're here to learn to um take those ideas that you heard from your third house you know take those very like abstract ideas and know when exactly or know how to like formulate those words so that they make sense so that everybody can like logically and like practically understand them you know so it's not like a gemini person a gemini moon person that maybe will say everything because um i'm a once again i'm a gemini moon person with my virgo sun sign so i feel like here yeah, it kind of plays in the same way you know because and this is your moon sign so you're going to be you like what makes you feel comfortable is knowing that you can like always see i feel like you know what? i'm sorry i'm just going off the top of my head like because i i keep saying one thing and then my brain is like oh my god like say it this way you know virgo sun sign anyway um but with this it's like you can be one of those people like you know like in school when you had to go look up at a dictionary and you had to like um spell out something and then your teacher always helps you like spell something correctly. That's what Virgo Moon people in the third house could do. I feel like you could even be a teacher with this, you know. Cause now you're like helping people that are like you you're you're in a familiar school with faces that you're gonna see every day. Familiar faces that you're gonna see every day. And then you can apply your Virgo moon seeing the details and the corrections to things, you know, and help other people correct whatever it is that they're saying. So I think with I feel like with this placement you're very good with words. You know, you're like very ex exceptionally good with words, and you know how to like, like you know exactly what somebody's saying. Like, let's say you're speaking to a Sagittarius Mercury person, and they like sometimes like you know like people never know what exactly what they're saying, especially with like Mercury Pisces people, where like they never really know what they're saying. I feel like with this placement, you're very good at like kind of just by the the words that they said. You kind of know exactly what they're saying so then you can like say it in a way that makes sense for everybody else you know and even in a way that makes sense for that person 
with the Mercury in Sagittarius or Mercury in, in Pisces. You know, that type of thing. So I feel like with this, you could be a really good teacher, you know. Um, but it's just going to be best. Like, what makes you feel comfortable is being in, like, environments that are very familiar to you. And having familiar faces around you, you know. So you could just have, like, you, just, you could also be the person that you, you, you always go to one specific restaurant. Or, um, you know, I don't know. You always buy your food from one specific grocery store. That type of thing, you know. And then um, if you have your Virgo moon sign in the fourth house, right? So the fourth house is at home in the moon because this is the house of basically your emotional stability, which is opposite your 10th house, which is your status stability, your work stability, right? Um, but in the fourth house, it's like your emotional stability, how you get nurtured, how you love to be nurtured, how you grew up, um, like how the the basic, how do I say this? Like how how your family raised you, basically, you know? Like the style that they raised you in. So if you have your moon in the fourth house in Virgo, you probably had a very nurturing mother. She loved you and she always tended to your emotions, but she always taught you how to. Um, she was like, okay, baby, you can cry, 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 cry. I get you, but she always like kind of made you understand how life is in a way, you know. And she was, she was, she was like very particular with maybe things that you ate, you know. Or maybe the family members in your house are very Virgo-like, or your mom was very Virgo-like, or your dad was very Virgo-like, just depending on who raised you. But whoever raised you was, like, very Virgo-like, you know? And you feel comfortable, like, what makes you feel comfortable is kind of, like, it's it's working, you know? And you always felt comfortable because your mother was always working. So she always told you that, okay, like, you know, emotions are all that, they're great, and whatever, cry as much as you need to. But remember that you have responsibility, you know, and you, I feel like even if you didn't have that, you grew up knowing that, okay, emotions are emotions, you know, but it's always important to have some kind of like income, you know, coming because you always need to be able to like kind of stand on your own two feet or in a way, you know, because money does give you emotional stability, you know, so you could, I feel like you also the friend that could teach this to your other friends or people that you considered family or people that you like took in and considered like very close to you you know you were able to teach these people how to like know okay it's one thing to cry right and i'm here for you and this is the advice that i'm giving to you so also with this like virgo women people in the fourth house are very good with like giving emotional advice you know and um kind of constructing their words in a way that makes other people feel like oh my god like you're so right that's exactly how i was feeling and you know you've given me a solution to how i should um attack this if this ever happens again you know so like kind of Virgo moons kind of not like it's like they have a very good judgment you know with Virgo moon in the fourth house like so they also know if like because they, they'll be able to feel if somebody is someone of a safe person to be around you know um that kind of energy so Virgo moon people in the fourth house are very like they're very caring right but also, I feel like it could also be somewhat of a Taurus energy here, where how they express their care for you, or how they like they express how they like care to be expressed to them is like through like logical advice, you know, because and not advice that's like not like Sagittarius advice, like hey man, it's all good, like life it is what it is. No, not that type of like not that type of advice, you know. It's like the advice that can. It's like life like life hack advice advice you know you know like those videos on youtube that like i don't know videos that tend to not or videos that make your life easier or vir videos that like are trying to make your life easier it's just shit like that you know virgo moon people give advice like that but like advice that can actually help you in your life like instead of like the virgo moon person in the fourth house will tell you and because it's at home right they're gonna be what makes them feel comfortable is being at home and like organizing that shit at home, right? So they can give other people advice on how to like place their plates in a specific way so it's easier to like reach or they'll, they'll be the type to tell you, you should probably put your bed in a specific way so that the sunlight can hit you in a specific way and you should put your plants in this specific way so that the sun, like, you know, that type of thing. Or you should, like, I feel like these could be really great feng shui people you know if you know what feng shui is like knowing how to organize something your home in a very spiritual way so that just in it you know what i'm saying um but yeah virgo moon people are really good at that like i feel like you could be feng shui kind of people where you can 
kind of organize people's homes, you know, because you also, what makes you feel comfortable is, like, being in a very clean home. You're probably, very, like, what makes you feel comfortable is clean people, you know, um, and just, like, very, not, not so much chaotic energies, you know. Um, I feel like you already have, like, nervous energy, you know, maybe even at home or whoever raised you had chaotic nervous energy, but there was always, like, nurture towards it, you know, and there was nurture behind that, so, um, it makes you even more nervous and anxious when you're around people that kind of either don't resonate with how you grew up or people it, like you feel really shy and like kind of awkward around people that you aren't um, somewhat like examples of the people that you grew up with. So okay, your mother, your brother, your siblings, your auntie, your uncle, just anybody like your friends that you've had since you were in grade one, just shit like that, you know. Uh, so that would make you feel com uncomfortable and very nervous and like nerve-wracking and shit like that. And then, um, but yeah, for the most part, I think Virgo moon signs in um, in the fourth house. These are very private people, like extremely private people. But for the most part, like what makes them feel comfortable is like somewhat having like stability and like having um, like a regular day-to-day -day basis. Like these are people that really they probably like they take three years doing the exact same thing every day you know waking up they clean their room they have hot tea then they eat their fruit you know um and also i want to say that they're emotionally connected to their job too you know they're emotionally connected to their job like but even more because this is what makes them feel comfortable and they probably have like family like all of their family members probably have jobs and even if they don't they'll probably be the one to have jobs and then like help everybody else so they they may be like you may be the person as a virgo son in the fourth house you may be the person that like gives that like you're the nurturing person so you like you're like the breadwinner of the house somewhat you know that type of thing and then um if it's in your fifth house if you have Virgo moon in your fifth house, so your fifth house is how you enjoy yourself, how you have fun, um, things that are fun to you, um, things that you like to entertain, what you're entertained by, and what you let entertain you, you know, so this is the house of Leo, so, over, and this is, like, the exp how you express yourself, basically, like, you know, because how you express yourself can be very, like, creative and childlike, and that's, like, the fifth house rules, childlike energy, you know, just anything that's, like, childlike, so, you know, children are very, like, very fun and expressive and just anything that's like so cool to them and whatever so if you have virgo here how you enjoy yourself is you like to clean like you like every like you know usually people hate going to their jobs and like waking up early and da 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 this is fun to you like you really enjoy this like you enjoy having a daily routine you enjoy knowing that like you're gonna like you enjoy knowing that you're safe and you enjoy knowing that you're gonna be able to expect something because it's part of your routine you know and it makes you nervous and it makes you angry when something isn't going in your routine because now it's not fun anymore you know um, but for the most part i feel like generally you you're very good with kids and if you have, if you do have kids you're like the mother or the father that knows um you, you'll know kind of the balance of how to have fun with your child and also like what to teach your teach teach your child excuse me how to what to teach your child and like um you I feel like you you'll be the parent that kind of knows um when when it's too far or like when you haven't kind of done enough you know even though the Virgo energy will be there and you kind of will be like kind of controlling in a way but you're like a fun parent for the most part and you're very funny you know as a Virgo moon person in the fifth house you're very funny you're a very funny person um you may enjoy like watching, what's this, um, what's it? home home decorating channels, or you may enjoy watching, you may, like you enjoy cleaning also, like that's really fun to you. So you may even teach your children how to enjoy cleaning. Okay, I just want to sit down real quick, I'm so tired of standing. <laughs> mm. Okay, yeah. so you may enjoy cleaning a lot, you know, you may enjoy, um, this may have pissed you off, I'm so sorry, I was really tired of standing, I've been standing for at least like 15 minutes, 54 minutes now, um, but yeah, as I was saying, as a Virgo moon person in the fourth house, I mean the fifth house, you enjoy 
like, okay, not only are you funny, right, but you enjoy other funny people, right? But you enjoy people who express themselves, but not in a way, like, see, it's different with every moon sign in the fifth house, you know? But with Virgo, yeah, you enjoy people that, that express themselves, but you, not like people that are like kind of Aries or Leo people in a way where they're like overly doing it. You know, I feel like you, you like knowing that, okay, like there's always a limit or there's a boundary somehow with Virgo moon people in the fifth house. You know, you're always like, okay, having fun, having fun, but whoa, not too much fun, you know? Because we don't want to like lose our hands or lose our feet or worse, like lose our teeth. That type of thing, you know. But for the most part, these are really, really funny people. And I feel like you can, you like to organize when you're going to have fun. You know, you like to organize and like work on, even like, to, you may even like, like to work on um, your creativity. You know, this is like, these, these are these kind of people that work on their creativity, that work on like having fun. These are people that can plan a holiday, you know, plan like, okay, we're going to go to Disneyland and then, I don't know, okay, I haven't been to Disneyland in my life, but okay, we're going to go to the mall and then go shopping and then we're going to, I don't know, go watch a movie and then we're going to go buy shoes again and then go eat and then these type, they, so they organize like, these type of people, sorry, so they organize like their fun, you know, so they do know how to have fun. But they can organize when, you know, and organize how they should have fun, that type of thing. So, I mean, it's still, like, you still respond to fun and, in, and like, entertainment and enjoyment. And I feel like you're, you're very expressive about, like, you're very expressive about your nitpickiness, you know. But how you express your nitpickiness may be very funny to other people. Because just basically how you react is going to be in, like, a childlike house, right? But it's going to be expressed in a very Virgo-ish way. So very night picking. So this is kind of similar to having a Virgo sun sign, where it's something that we see, but like we can see, like Virgo sun sign, we can see that oh, they, these these are nervous people. They're very organized. Da 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 da. So with the moon sign, yeah, how like whenever you react to something, it's gonna be funny because it's gonna be like because you're still expressing that Virgo energy, you know. But it's not it's not so much as in your sun sign. It's just gonna be in your moon sign. But you're gonna have like expressive emotions in a Virgo way. Basically, that's the best way that I can explain it. I mean, and then, um, if you have your moon in the sixth house, right? Now, this adds, like, a dip, a double Virgo emphasis, because the sixth house does rule Virgo. So, the sixth house is how you, um, it's your everyday routines, things that you do on a daily basis, um, your work, you know, having your job, because you do that every day, waking up at a specific time every day, anything that's a schedule or routine, you know, your health, how you be healthy. So, I feel like with this... As a Virgo moon in the sixth house, you are probably very particular about every single thing that you do because this is what makes you feel comfortable. Already having a Virgo moon, you're like you you need to have a job because like you like knowing that there's something to expect tomorrow, right? But having this in the sixth house is this is what makes you feel comfortable. Generally, you feel uncomfortable even around people that don't have this, right? And then you'd probably be the type to like nag people that don't have a job. Like, oh my god, you can't you can't just live your life not having something to like not not, not having something to do. Even if you're studying, at least have some kind of somewhat income, you know? So these are people that can also like very much like stick to a job just because they know that like like these are these these are the type of people that let's say they want to move into another job or they want to start something else they're like they have to make sure that that foot is in the door and there's no and like there's no kind of uncertainty or there's no okay maybe maybe they need to know okay if i leave here i need to know that when i go there it's a guarantee that i'm staying there that type of thing you know so if and if they don't have that surety then they'll stick to this one thing because once again it's something that they're sure that they can like hold on to that that it's something like that that can they can consider a stability somewhat like that you know what i'm saying because it's still earth and the sixth house is an earth house so if you have if you have your virgo moon in the sixth house yeah this adds this adds like a double emphasis on virgo um Virgo energy, you know, very, very particular about things that you eat. You're probably a vegan or vegetarian, pescatarian, anything that's Aryan, you know, those diets. You probably follow a very strict diet. You probably work out every day re religiously, you know, or I don't know, like you, you, you just know, you like you have a particular plan about like when you're going to work out, you know. Um, you probably don't wear a lot of 
color you probably wear like a lot of black gray just like dollish clothes you know like nudes um that type of thing you know because you're not really someone that would like attention but then again it depends because if you have your leo if you have a leo moon i feel like this will also like kind of dim it down but for the most part you probably an aries rising with this so you see it all depends though it all depends but for the most part yeah i'd also say you probably wear like a lot of dollish colors like maybe maybe red like or maroons you know like maroon just like kind of mellowish chill vibes but then again, it also depends on your rising. Because as a Leo rising, I don't know. You, know, you might not care about that. It really depends, guys. Just give a birth chart reading. Um, but yeah, Virgo mean people, like, you can be very particular with things that you wear. Oh my God, the friends that you have around and the people that are in your life, you criticize them to a T because you are so critical of yourself. Virgo, like, listen, Virgo energy is critical of themselves. But if you have your moon in the sixth house, and if you have a Virgo moon in the sixth house, oh my gosh. You criticize every little... You probably in a conversation with people and you probably like... You're like analyzing how am I standing? Okay, do I look interested or not? You know? You're probably like analyzing how you're speaking, the tone that you're using. You know? You probably... You get very embarrassed if you if you do that. And people do and they go like... Ah! Like they're speaking like... Yeah, my name is... Ah! You know? You probably get very embarrassed by those things. And when other people do that, you look at them like... <laughs> you know? <laughs> child oh my god you must be so bossy with this also like you not bossy but controlling in a way that you see because for you it's very particular and it's very comforting and reassuring to know that like things that you're doing are like perfect and, and even if they're not perfect like nobody's watching you or nobody's paying attention to you not be perfect you know it's really nice to know that but whenever you do come to the forefront you like to make sure that you're very on point you know you're very matter of fact to that type of thing and you don't like when other people come to you and they're not matter of fact because to you it's like oh my god how dare you come to me with some useless information that i'm literally never going to use like you just wasted five minutes of my life and i'm never going to get that back how dare you you know virgo moon i feel like virgo moon people in the sixth house like they like to talk about things that are like like about money you know what i'm saying like how can we get money you know do you have money do you have that thing you know what i'm saying like virgo moon people don't come to them with some spiritual because it's like okay you can be a spiritual but like are you getting money from that you know virgo moons like virgo moon people in the sixth house that like, they'll probably appreciate that even more like bet you have like yo you emotional write a book about it get some money you know oh you spiritual write a book about that oh just, i don't know do something get money from that shit you know but I, I feel like they could also help their friends do this too. Like, they could be the friend that's like, okay, tell me, I get it. Like, you're going through whatever it is that you're going through. But how you can make money from that, you know? So they can kind of step into, like, Capricorn energy in that little way. You know, like, how are you going to get money? I mean, you can have all these ideas, these feelings, these spiritual emphasis. But do you have money? Do you have that thing? <laughs> and if you come to them with, like, all of that, I just realized I, I, they can like, oh, well, well, do you have money? <laughs> do you have that thing? Do you have it? But these are people that can, like, tell you, that can, like, recommend you to really good, um, I can recommend you, like, for really good skincare products. They can, like, tell you about all the, all the, um, the products that they use that help their skin. They can direct you to the, like, really good restaurants, give you, like, a, a diet plan, give you, um, like, a workout plan. You know, these are people that are very, like, very much health orientated. You know, like, working out is super crucial to them. Because here's the thing, like, if a, a Virgo moon is already nervous as hell, right? You know, and it's so important for them because they, cause they're an earth sign, right? And this is an earth house. So all of their stress and all of that nervous energy is going to, like, uh, kind of build in different body parts. So working out is a form of releasing because it's physical. And it's so important for moon people in the sixth house to work out and... Be on their vitamins, you know, have their vitamins, work out regularly, drink their water, you know what I'm saying? These are health gurus. I feel like if you have a Virgo moon in your sixth house, you're a health guru, you know what I'm saying? You're you on your shit about your health. Oh my, no one can take you away from your health. You probably feel like you start getting sick if you're not working out, that type of thing, you know? And you probably get sick from... I feel like these are like the... I'm allergic to gluten kind of people or I'm allergic to wheat, whatever those kind of people, you know, like they, their bodies and they are very, very specific with 
their food. But I also feel like in relationships, they could also very much suck. Because they're also like, what makes them feel comfortable is having structure. In, uh, not structure, but having a routine <laughs> in their relationships. So these are the people that may not be able to like easily free flow in a, in a relationship. Because they have to see everything the other person is doing wrong. And they may like project all their internal fears onto their partners, you know. And then expect their partners to like also live up to some kind of unrealistic expectation that they can't even fucking maintain. Um, and they nag about it if they can't fucking reach that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's for everyone in the sixth house. In the seventh house... Excuse me. Um, in the sig- in the seventh house, if you have a Virgo moon in the seventh house, so the seventh house is your relationships, how you relate to people, how you relate to people, places, and things. Oh, so many people speaking. My dad is here and my brother is here, and they're like loud as hell. Um, but yeah, your seventh house is how you relate to people, um, how you relate to just the world, but on a one-on-one basis, you know. So it's not really, it's not having your entire group of friends over, like your third house, but it's okay. It's just me and Stacy, and me and Stacy are relating our lives. So that's one-on-one thing. So you do this every day, even when you like speaking to someone on your phone or I don't know when you're relating to a character on TV, that type of thing. So if if it's in your moon, what makes you feel comfortable is relating. So you may you may like you feel comfortable when you're like having either a being in a relationship, like having boyfriend girlfriend type of thing, you know, or it could be um and you also okay here's the thing this is also someone of a full year right because since the seventh house is about relating right and Virgo energy is about discriminating and seeing the faults to it right what makes you feel comfortable already is being in relationships right but you're the type of person that in your relationships you like to see how both of you guys can improve right and then you may because you're a Virgo because you're a Virgo and you're mutable right and you you analyze how other people do things and then you kind of tell them how they can improve right you may you may be the the type of person where you you've been in multiple relationships, and then you kind of see what went wrong, what went wrong, right? And then you get into this way this relationship, and you're like, okay, this is what happened in my old relationships. I don't want to do this, right? And then it, okay, here's here's where you can somewhat throw somebody off is when you kind of already have a list of things that they shouldn't do. You know what I'm saying? So it's different because every relationship, you know, you help, it's compromising and shit like that. But once again, the Virgo energy isn't really about compromise. And I feel like Virgos find it not... Yes, yeah, here's the thing with Virgos, you know? Here's the thing with Virgo moon sign people. And it also depends on your sun sign. Because if your sun sign is in Libra or in Pisces, then it's a lot easier for you to kind of... Um, compromise but a virgo won't feel like they should compromise if they've had um examples in their past lives or not part like not past life in their past relationships of failure if they've been in relationships before and those relationships didn't work out or they had specific faults a virgo is going to take all those faults right and then put them in this new relationship and then be like okay this is what happened before this can't happen again you know what i'm saying so and the next person will be like okay shit well i mean like damn i'm like this you know and like this is what makes me feel comfortable so the virgo will be like okay this doesn't work for me child listen this is not working for me so we can we either gonna have to like work on this shit we're gonna have to work on this relationship you know Oh, we're going to have to fucking, like, uh, we're going to have to end it. So in that way, they can be very stubborn. Where they can be like, listen, you're either going to give me what I want, or we're just going to have to end this. But here's the thing, Virgo. Compromise is everything. Everybody comes into relationships with bullshit and baggage and all of that shit. But sometimes it's really just about accepting that somebody is the way they is. Like, they are the way they are. You know, sometimes you have to accept that, okay, this person has a mole on their face and it's never going to go away. Accept it, you know. Or this person, I don't know, this person stutters a lot. It's who they are. Fucking get over it. Love them for who they are, you know. That type of thing. So a Virgo, I feel like they like to work on the relationship, but they also like to, like, 
in the in the seventh house, right? What makes them feel comfortable is being in relationships, but how they relate to people isn't in a relatable way. <laughs> it's more so about they like they relate. They can they can relate their 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 their, their like things that they don't like. You know, they'd be like they like to relate to somebody that kind of has the same dislikes or kind of experiences life in the same way that they do. Like a Virgo moon person in the seventh house relates. Like let's say a Virgo moon in the seventh per- in the seventh house person cleans a lot and they don't like other people that don't clean they like to relate to other people that feel the same way about them and then if they somewhat be in a relationship with somebody else who doesn't resonate with what um things that they resonate with then they'll criticize them you know and they'll want to work on getting that person on the same page as they are in you know what i'm saying that type of thing <laughs> you know um so anyway like it, this it kind of it kind of sucks to have this placement, especially being somebody that's in a relationship with the Virgo moon person in the seventh house. But for the most part, I feel like they could, um, but I feel like the good parts of this is that uh, it can be very helpful in relationships and like kind of helping their friends analyze what's going wrong and what went wrong. But in their relationship, it just goes away. Like they just suck at that shit. Like they just, oh my God. So I just say, I'll, I'll say, if you have a Virgo moon in your seventh house, rather just be with people that are on the same page as you are, because it's gonna be very, very frustrating to date somebody that doesn't have the same values as you do, darling. You know, and that may take you a while, and then you may even realize that you probably don't want to be in relationships, even though this is what makes you feel comfortable. So even with your brother and sisters or like your siblings, you probably the type to always like analyze their lives. So whenever they're like, whenever they're telling you about their lives, you're like, I feel like you know what? I feel like you shouldn't do that in your life. Like I feel like you should just do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And then your family, your family members might get very frustrated with you because they're like, what the fuck, dude? Like, no, I'm trying to connect with you, and you're busy telling me that I shouldn't. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you know. So people feel like they have to walk on eggshells around you in a way. Um, but I feel like also on one end, you could also like to tell other people, like talk about how you, how nitpicky you are, you know, like to laugh about that. And like, oh, you know, I'm actually controlling and bossy, <laughs> you know, um, and then like nag somebody who's like, oh, well, I don't like that. But you know, that's what it is. It is what it is. You know, one side, you're very helpful with organizing other people's um, relationships and you know, like you'll know what to say to help other people's relationships but i feel like with your relationships you just like it's a bit much you know because somebody may not even feel free around you like damn bruh fuck oh my god jesus christ ah but it, it could also be in a good part where i don't know you 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 know what not to do in a relationship and then like you know you know the specific actions to take to not be like the shitty person or like not do the shitty things that you did in your other relationships you know so that's the good part about it you know, and you can discriminate when someone is, like, on some fuck shit and when someone isn't, you know, in that way. And you can help other people figure this out, too. And then if it's in your eighth house, right? So the eighth house is your secrets, your desires, um, your internal, how you, like, how you construct your own emotions, you know? Not, like, initiating emotions and not, like knowing the overall feeling of emotion, but basically your own emotions, you know, your own desires, your own secrets, even other people's secrets, um, inheritance, shit like that, whatever. So in terms of inheritance, you might inherit a lot of shit from your mother, you know, because your moon is your mother, it's your Merkaba. Um, But yeah, if you have a Virgo moon in the eighth house, now the moon does not like being in the eighth house under no circumstances, you know, because instead of being, instead of, like, reacting to its own comfort, it's kind of selfish towards it, it's like, um, you're very, you're not, like, it's, like, kind of, it puts you in, like, a a manipulation kind of energy, where instead of, like, just reacting to emotions, you're reacting to secrets and desires and, like, lies and, like, things that are beneath the waters you know and transformation that's what the eighth house is transformation like you're acting to transformation so there's no like there's no somewhat stability you know because you're always like either very high or very low you know and the moon kind of even though the moon's constantly changing it's changing kind of in a slower way whereas like the eighth house is either 
or transforming or like stagnant as hell, you know, that type of thing. So that's why the moon does not like the eighth house. So if you have a Virgo moon sign in the eighth house, right? So now it's a double emphasis on the four of Venus. It's it's the same thing with moon in the sixth house and it'll be the same thing with moon in the tenth house. Only in in the tenth house, wait, what does it say? So not the sixth house, just the eighth house and the tenth house. Yeah. So in the eighth house, it's it's it's. But I'm I'm saying it double emphasis because this Virgo Virgo so falls in in Venus, you know. So if you have and the eighth house also is away in Venus. So with this, I feel like you can be. Not to say that you don't have love or like you don't know how to love people, but what makes you feel comfortable is like having your own secrets. So I feel like with this, you're very like very not private, but you're very secretive with this shit, you know. Um. And this makes you even more like someone someone that lies in the dark in the darkness. But not like darkness. You just like very like here. Everybody's like talking about their lives and you're like just watching. You know, you're not saying anything, you're just oh just kind of watching everybody do things, you know, because you have like this internal secretive private world that you don't want anybody to kind of know so it's like it's the energy of like you have a lot of skeletons in your closet you know and you like to you don't like being around other people that you may feel like a sound because okay this is this like this 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 forms like a little sextile thing right so if you have your virgo moon in the eighth house it's it's kind of like organizing or it's like organizing your 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 shadow work that type of thing you know so you like to act, organize your shadow work in a way because the eighth house is basically it's also scorpio right and scorpio is all about like some things that are in the dark you know things that i never brought up to the light and this pluto demands it too you know um so with this it's it's like you can be very controlling and very manipulative with the people that are in your that are in like your life you know and it could also be a thing of that like your mother or just the house that you grew up in was very secretive, right? And But you also know how to detect those things, right? Because Virgo energy and Scorpio energy is very detective, like, you know. So you know how to detect other people that are lying to you, other people that are, like, throwing shit on you, or people that, like, say specific things. And, you know, sometimes people say specific things. So a Virgo moon person in the eighth house, they'll know just based on what people say where they're at emotionally and intellectually, you know? And the Virgo moon person will know. Like, let's just say the Virgo moon person wants something or they want to get ahead of something, you know? They want, like, some kind of... They want to go climb up the ladder or whatever that they want. They'll know because of whatever this person has said. They'll know if this person is... They'll know what page this person is on. And they'll know what to say and what to do so that this person thinks that the person with the Virgo moon in the 8th house is someone on the same page as them, and then the Virgo moon person in the 8th house will know, um, will know kind of, like, how to manipulate that person to do what they want, you know. But this could also be on, the, on, a, on, on like, a positive note, because if you're, if you're somebody that's, like, distressed and you need help, you know, this Virgo, this Virgo moon person will know what page you are on once again and know the right things to say so that you look at a situation in a different way. And then you're like, oh my god, that was actually very helpful, you know? So that's like the negative, positive charge of this. Nicki Minaj has this placement. Virgo moon in the 8th house. So you're probably uh, an Aquarius rising with this. I'm an Aquarius rising too, but my moon is in... I have my sign in the 8th house as a Virgo sun sign. So these are my actions, you know? This is what I'm aware of. But sometimes with Virgo sun sign people in the 8th house, it's like you're not really seeing... It's like you're not seeing the whole picture of it, you know? Because you're only seeing what you want to see. But in the moon sign, you're like, you're feeling things that people aren't showing, you know? That type of thing. So that's what, that's the difference of it. Like, so you can feel when someone has ulterior motives, you know? They don't have to, like, you can just feel that someone came here with ulterior motives. And then with those detective Mercury Virgo eyes, you can just, like, analyze their eye movement, their nose gesture, their lips, how their lips are moving, their hands. That type of thing. So it makes you a super detective. That type of thing, you know. Um, but sometimes it could also just be 
like whenever you feel that then you already like you start coming up with ideas about what this person is trying to do but sometimes okay, so most of the time you are right about people's ulterior motives but sometimes like that that three percent you know when you're wrong and you may be around an air sign person that just likes to talk a whole bunch of shit you know and to you you take everything so deeply and you take everything not personally but everything it's like you take it like an emotional jab so when people do or when people are acting illogical you kind of like it makes you super nervous and then it makes you feel like oh my god like they're trying to do something like they're trying to kill me or they're trying to plot something against me you know that type of thing and like sometimes that's not always right because you may be around a fire sign person also that's just like acting illogical and like just expressing whatever it is that they're feeling at the moment and then you start getting nervous and then you you may even like either you'll lash out or you'll just want to like completely like stay in your room so i feel like this is also like the placement of people that don't like to go out a lot you know you may just like to stay at home and if you're dating somebody you, you make sure that they also like somebody that likes to stay at home you don't like you may not like spontaneity a lot but the way that you take because you, you still have the virgo energy towards like behind it right so you also take um you like to make things perfect right but I feel like with this, it's more so about like the, because you have an emotional connect, connection with this, right? But it's, you're even more harder on yourself because you start thinking like, you start like making, or you start viewing everything that you do and you, you can get like very self-conscious with this, you know? Like, I mean, Virgo energy period is very hard on themselves. But if it's in the eighth house, I feel like you can get, trans like you always transform yourself by stinging yourself. By always, like, being hard on yourself, you know? So you always... On the positive end, you always, like, you know, level up. But to the cost of, like, literally, like, breaking yourself down. That type of thing. And then if it's in your ninth house... Um, so the ninth house is higher education. It is um, wisdom, experiences. So this is the Sagittarius house, you know? Experiences. Um, and you gain you gain wisdom from experiencing things, you know. So if you have a Virgo moon in the ninth house, you're very experienced. Like you have wise emotions, right? And your wise emotions, you're able to, like, you're like a teacher naturally, right? But it's more so like you are able to like logically tell people things that you've been through, you know. And here's the thing that's like the 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 discrimination part of Virgo kind of plays out really well here it like it plays out really well here because like even though this is a square right and i feel like you you you're kind of here to know like you're kind of here to somewhat um ex like know how to take your experiences and all your emotional wisdom right and know how to like construct it in a way that helps other people move forward right but whatever it is that you say, always it's always like backed and supported by your own experiences to something. So this gives you wise grandmother energy, right? And you're you're able to like specifically like um explain the the exact specific details. Like so you may you may be somebody that like I don't know, you may have been like a an ex drug addict or something and within you experiencing being an addict right you know like because you live your life knowing the exact details of what happened and how you were feeling and what this feeling was like and what this feeling was like so i'm sure everybody by now has watched um euphoria rue part one you know that guy that that ex crack addict you know who was able to kind of explain to rue like i know exactly what addiction is like you know i've gone through all these experiences and this is, and then he was explaining. It, he was just like giving wisdom to you, and like, listen, addiction is like this, da da da. da. So it's that kind of energy, you know, where you know, like, you know exactly, you know the exact, like, detailed words to say, and you know when somebody, like, you, you know, you exactly, you know exactly what somebody say, and you know exactly how to like. Like you resonate, you, you're like you're able to kind of resonate with whatever experience somebody is like giving out to you and you're able to like be like listen dude i know exactly what you're going through but in order to get out of that you need to take these specific steps because going through that experience is only gonna, it's only gonna like make you experience these other experiences and these other experiences are just gonna take you down the road of fucking death you know that's one end you know um but for the most part like you're very you have very wise emotions you know you're like emotionally wise and you also kind of criticize people that aren't um 
that don't take hints or that don't know how to take hints or that don't know how to like read between the lines or that don't know how to um like that aren't smart enough to like know what's up basically you know that type of energy and then if you have your um Virgo moon in the 10th house, right? So the 10th house is your status, your reputation, what you're known for, and what, like, how you get to the top of whatever it is that you want to get to, you know, status quo, basically, that type of energy. So if you have your moon in the 10th house, now the moon falls in the 10th house, not falls, it's away in the 10th house. Um, but one thing about this is that it's still predicated on bringing emotional stability. Only, so, um, the only difference with... Like, the 4th house and the 10th house is that the 4th house is more so emotional stability. And then the 10th house is more so, like, like reputation kind of stability, you know. Um, so, if Virgo's here and 10th house is here, it's, you feel comfortable with having a status, you know. So, you're probably known for somebody that's worked at a specific job for your whole life. Or you, you've been doing, like, one thing somewhat your whole entire life, you know. I feel like with this, you have to be a Sagittarius rising or a... What, a Capricorn rising? Not a Capricorn. What's before Sag? A Scorpio rising. Yeah, you could be a Scorpio rising or a Sagittarius rising. Um, but for the most part, or even a Capricorn rising. Yeah, because either those three, Scorpio, Sagittarius, or Capricorn. So with this, I feel like you are somebody that, um, like, you're known for having, you've been, you've either worked, like, your entire, like, you've worked at a specific job your entire life, that type of thing, so you're known for that, being that person, or it could also be, you know, because Scorp I mean, not Scorpio, Virgo's, um, Virgo rules like anything to do with your hands. So pottery, writing, anything that you can do with your hands, you know, cooking, whatever. So you, you may be known for doing that, you know, and what makes you feel comfortable is not only being around people who have some kind of status. So it's like this kind of energy where it's like you don't feel comfortable being around people that don't have somewhat of a reputation. Or you may be the one that helps other people like be on the same level as you. So you'll help somebody have a job or you'll help somebody kind of do something that resonates with whatever you're doing, you know. And if you're with people that don't do that, if you're with people that, like, are on the same page as you in terms of your stability, you kind of dip from those people or you nag those people to start having stability so that they can match you because you're going to feel uncomfortable with people that don't have that, you know. You feel uncomfortable with people, like... And then you nag and criticize the people. And, you, like, you step into judgmental energies. Like, oh, my God, I can't see myself hanging out with, like, bums like this. I can't hang out with people that don't have any kind of stability. And then you also may be hot on yourself. Like, you you wouldn't want to go out if you don't have anything to show for, you know. Um, yeah. Basically, that's what makes you feel comfortable. So you feel uncomfortable with things that don't resonate with you, um having some kind of, like, a ground to stand on. You know what I'm saying? And then if it's in your 11th house, so your 11th house is your associations, things that you're associated with, people, places, and things that you're associated with. So not your friends, but the people that you see whenever you go to a specific bar. You know, those are your associations. Um, even places like, oh, you just moved into this town, so you go out to this specific place and now you're associated with it, you know? So things that are unfamiliar too. So you've lived one place your entire life, and now you moved overseas and now you don't know this place. So it's unfamiliar to you, you know, you don't really know. And then as you live there, then you become familiarized and then you step into your third house, that type of shit. And then you start meeting friends and having one-on-ones and then you step into your seventh house, you know, that type of thing. So if you have your, if you have a, um, uh, if you have your moon sign in Virgo in your eleventh house, right? So what makes you feel comfortable is in these kind of situations that I explained, you know, meeting new people going to new places, scenarios, um, being on social media, being an advocate on social media, um, meeting people that you don't know on social media, overseas people, you know, social media basically, like on a broader scale, broader scale. Um, and if it's Virgo, yeah, you probably could also like, um, you know how to organize these associates, you know, you know how to like be like, okay, I met you when I went to Spain and I met you when I went to Portugal. Um, and in Spain and Portugal, I learned these things. And I I brought this information, I got this information, and da 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 that type of thing, you know. Um, and I feel like you also know how to, so, oh shit, you know how to somewhat, um, like, 
I feel like, okay, you're very smart with this, you know, because the 11th house is the Aquarius house, you know, and this also makes you sound like of a detective, but not like 8th house type of shit where you can see the, the unseen. This is more so like, this is more so like knowing, like this is like the I'm acting stupid kind of energy because I know exactly what you're thinking. That type of thing, you know, I know what you're thinking and I can outthink you. I can outsmart you. That type of energy, you know. Okay, this one is actually really whack. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is Virgo energy in the 11th house, you know. Like, what makes you feel comfortable is, like, these associations that you're with. You're, like, you know how to organize your associations. And um, it makes you feel comfortable when, like, everybody isn't so jimble jambled around. Like, you know, you like, you, you have specific friends for specific things. You know, you have your shopping friends. You have friends that you smoke with. You have friends that you go watch movies with. You have friends that you... I don't know, you have friends from school, and you know how to, like, organize these, and you don't like to kind of mix and mangle those friends, and when those friends know how to mix and mangle, you kind of, I don't know, you kind of figure out a way to, to get this one person to know, okay, this is how I'm like when I'm with these group of people, and you don't like when these friends are like, oh, wow, you changed, damn, I didn't know you were a comedian, because technically you are a comedian. But your comedian then knows how to construct and know which friends to hang out with, you know. Because different friends bring out different vibes in you. And I feel like as a Virgo Moon in the 11th house person, you know this better than most people. And then finally, if it's in your 12th house, if you have a Virgo Moon in the 12th house, now this is an opposition kind of a little bit. A little bit. So 12th house is your dreams, right? How you, When you go to sleep. Basically, 12th house is sleep. It rules basically the subconscious and the overall overall um, consciousness of emotions um, subconscious conscious of emotions um, it's the the subconscious basically you know because when you're sleeping you're basically diving into your subconscious so it's your dreams it's also your creativity and your imagination so with this it's also you like oh so I forgot to mention if it's in your 11th house you probably work better what makes you feel comfortable is working with people that you're associated that you're not associated with so this could be this could be, you could be working with people that are, like, you could be a flight attendant with this, you know? And then, sorry, and if it's in your 12th house, once again, if it's in your 12th house, then you are somebody, like, or I explained, this 12th house is your subconscious, your dreams, your imagination, when you go to sleep, your subconscious, basically, your subconscious life. So if it's in, if you're a Virgo in your 12th house, you like to work on your subconscious, right? And you kind of like to make sense of your subconscious, right? And it could be very frustrating because you can't do that because the subconscious is very fluid, and it's very, it's something that you can't dissect with words and intellect because it's not of the intellect, you know. Like, your dreams are everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Your dreams are weird. You could, you're, like, here one time and then you wait, and not wake up, but you look over and then you're in a different place. Do you know what I'm saying? That type of thing. But as a Virgo moon person in the 12th house, you're going to try and organize this and you're going to try and analyze this. And it's, it could be very frustrating also just because you're not going to be able to know what it is like, you're not going to be able to really, like, explain it, you know? That type, of, you're not going to be able to explain these things. But whenever somebody else comes to you and they try to explain their dreams, you're going to kind of know what it is that they're saying, you know? And you might even be the one to give them really good advice, like, dude, I literally have had similar dreams to yours. And, like, I, I felt this way about this. So, yeah, there we go. You're like, I felt, I, I, I know this because I felt a, a particular, like I had a particular dream that's similar to yours. And then you can be able to kind of understand, right, when other people come to you and they kind of present whatever subconscious um, thing that they ha thing that they haven't dealt with, you know. Like, I feel like you're going to be able, just by looking at somebody, you can like understand what it is that they go through subconsciously and their subconscious insecurities and things that they keep in their subconscious that they don't really know why they do and then you're going to be able to size them up you know and criticize them for that because sometimes you may even criticize somebody um but like how so you may be like you know what you are the way that you are because you don't know how to talk about your feelings or you are the way that you are because 
secretly deep down inside, you're actually afraid of da 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 da. So you're criticizing the things that people don't really bring out, you know. So you know how to, like, you know what it is that they're hiding, and then you're criticizing that. So you're not so much criticizing their face or their hair. And even though you may do that, you may criticize why. You're like, you don't comb your hair because you're actually lazy, and you're lazy because your mother is that. You see that type of thing, you know. So that's the the Virgo part of that. Like you're just like you're dissecting criticizing and organizing people things that people keep behind closed doors you know because well, it's 12th house is a water side and it's seeming and what is like things that are like things that we don't present outside you know um but yeah that's my video this is so long this is the longest video i have so far um but i hope you enjoyed this burger moon i love you so much and please subscribe like share comment all of that juicy shit and I'll see you in my next video for Leo Moons.